All right, y'all, ain't no half stepping with Marcus J is live. We in the building. We ready to get it in. We got a live hot show in store for y'all. We got a lot to get into. We got a couple of questions that's going to make y'all crazy towards the end of the show. We want to talk about the ladies and Father's Day. Ladies and Father's Day. We want to know about the dude that stripped at his high school graduation. And we want to know what's going on with the dude that was acquitted of murder and then turned around and got murdered. We got a lot going on tonight. Ain't no half step with Marcus J is right now. thinking cap socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week it's time for ain't no half stepping with marcus j Sellers has jordan jordan with two seconds to go puts it up and score at the buzzer michael jordan has won it for chicago manning loves it burris alone If they lying, then they must be half stepping. You know, half stepping with Marcus J. It's live. We in the den, ready to get it in. We appreciate everybody for listening to us tonight. We say 402 2893 to be down with the flagship show of Legacy Internet Radio. We appreciate everybody for being down with us tonight. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Be down with us at 804 We got a big show for y'all tonight. We got our special guests in the room. We're going to hear from them momentarily. But as I do every single week, I like to go around the room and introduce everybody who is going to be a part of the show tonight. Coming back to us. This man hasn't been with us in studio in quite a while. It's good to see him. We got my brother Carlton Banks in the room. What's up, brother? Yeah! I'm going to be loud because I ain't been loud in a minute. And he hates it when I get loud. So I had to start off with some hate and, and say, I'm happy to be back, man. What's going on? I like it in here. You got some new digs. You got a um, little red carpet kind of thing going on over here. You got some lights up in this piece. AC cranked up because it's outside. I could have sworn I saw somebody combust. What's up, Carl? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm great. That's you great. all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. It's good to see you, man. Thank you. I'm glad to be seen. I'd rather, I'd rather be seen than viewed. Yeah. Uh, every time I hear people make that joke, I always just kind of look at them like, really? Yeah, really? Yeah. I like to be seen. I'm, 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 well, I'm, I'm glad that you're being seen. <laughs> you're glad that I'm seen. I'm glad that you're being seen. Okay. All right. Ain't no how to start with Marcus J. Of course, you heard her at the top of the show. Yeah. Joining us for the second week in a row, we got our sister blessed in the room. Yes, y'all must be blessed to have me here twice in two weeks. We yes. are. We are definitely blessed to have thing. you. How you doing? I'm wonderful. It's hot outside, so the cold air on my back is freezing right now. You mean the cold air that you're blocking that I can't get none of? You talking <laughs> yeah, about the, that the, cold the, air? The, the wind on my back, yeah, and the cold chair is kind of cold. Yeah. So. You feeling pretty damn good over yeah. there. Is that why I'm so damn hot right now? <laughs> Would you like me to move it? I'll move it. We'll get. We'll, we'll take care of it. I'm just messing with you. So you doing all right? I'm doing fine. All yes. right, so that's the crew. Calm Banks, Miss Blessed. And yours truly, Marcus JSY, will join us momentarily. Be down with us at 804 the flagship show here at Legacy Internet Radio, uh, here on uh, every single Monday night from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Um, what I want to get into first, you know, they always say that it comes in threes. Uh, and so we got to kind of pay tribute to some of the folks that we've lost since the last time we did our show here on Legacy Internet radio a week ago Carlton Banks last week we lost the legendary Ruby D at the age of 91 in natural causes um, many of us here uh, in our general age group know her from movies like uh, do the right thing and things of like that so what's your thoughts on Ruby D and her passing last week you know one of the things about her and Ozzy Davis that really come to mind for as long as they were married 
They had an open relationship. I took I took that to be like, wow, that's that's a real interesting thing. That's at, the that number age. one thing. That's the number one thing that you got out. No, but see, it was just I it, didn't even know that. Yeah, I, but, I heard about that after she passed away. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying it was one of those things that, considering the age group that they grew up in, that y'all have an open relationship at y'all age. I mean, Impressive. just because you old don't mean you want, you know. You don't want to get to swinging. Yeah. I, mean, I ain't going to say it's a bad thing. I'm just saying in general. It's just one of the things you ain't hear of. It's like Lucy and Desi playing in separate beds on the, on the TV show. You know, you ain't see that kind of thing. You, ain't, you don't notice that. So that kind of stuck out of my head. And, you know, every now and then you saw him on a Cosby show and whatnot. So <laughs> that was a good thing to say. Which the, ah, that, that wasn't the right show, but that, I'm just saying. That was not Ozzie Davis, but okay. Right. <laughs> so we talked about last week the 91-year-old lady that's uh, getting 31-year-old. What would you think about that? What you think about would that? Would you huh? have hit Ruby? Would you hit off Ruby D? <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie. I'm sorry. I've <laughs> seen some pictures of Ruby D. We talk about we talk about the 2014 Ruby D, not the 1954 Ruby Ruby D, she'd have got hollered at. Now, we should probably, like, not go there. Yeah, you know? I, I did do that <laughs> wrong. Should, I apologize, ladies. We should lady. probably not go there. Because, you know, Bless brought it up, but I almost went there with you. My name is Bless, and I'm the terriblest, yeah, <laughs> the worst thing to happen. There. But, 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 but I, I guess my thoughts on her, the first time that I remember seeing her, again, wasn't do the right thing. I, was, I guess it was about 15 and 89 when it came out. And I just know her as mother's sister. You know, and Ossie Davis as the mayor. And then when I found out that they were a couple and they were married, they had been forever, I just thought that it was real cool. It's one thing when you see young people that seem to fit, but when, when you see old people that fit and then you realize they've been together forever. I got an aunt and an uncle right now. They're both in their 80s. have been married over 50 years. Yes. And when I see them together, I'm like, word is bond. There's, there's help, or I should say hope, you know, out there for, for some young folks. You know, so I guess um, you know our apologies for getting almost out of control yes, a minute I, ago. I but um, you know, Forgive you know, rest me. in paradise to Ruby yes. D. We also lost over the weekend Casey Kasem. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I thought, dude. Well, I, I, I knew he wasn't gone, but wasn't it just a couple of months ago that they that he was missing and the family was looking for him and. You know, you know, one family member had him, and they crossed the border, and it was just a whole bunch of drama. Calm banks. You remember all of that a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I do. Um, and the thing about Casey Kasem, the first thing that comes to my mind is him and Shaggy. Yeah, That's man. That's the first thing, man. I mean, I didn't know him as a radio DJ. I just knew him as Shaggy, the voice of Shaggy, and that's what stayed in my mind. So. Hold on, my wait childhood a is now officially gone. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Shaggy has been. Scooby you mean to tell Shaggy? me that you did not know that? You didn't know him from anything other than Scooby Doo. That's the only thing I knew him from. Wow, Les, did you know that? I, I didn't. So, were you a Scooby Doo person? <sighs> no, not really. That was a oh, little wait, bit wait, wait, before wait, wait, wait. me. How you gonna not be a Scooby Doo person? I, I, it was a little bit before Mama me. Mama Jay's eleven same, and she's a Scooby Doo person. It had the same storyline and everyone. There's a monster. <laughs> you take off his head and it's a real person. It it, it, it was the same story. And they would have gotten away with it if, if it, it wasn't had, for the damn kids. <laughs> See, there you go. So he messing up the show, changing it from G to PG by saying damn. They didn't say no damn. They said meddling. Oh they shit. They said darn. I said. It. Damn. Damn. He meddling. did say meddling. He yes. said meddling. Hey, look, I used to trip when I got like to to, to the age of maturity. And I realized why Scooby and Shaggy was always so Eating hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Why you, know why? <laughs> why you had to go there? I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, it's legal in two states. 48 more to go. I mean, come on now. I'm not the one. I cannot be blessed. The only one that had that thought. Come I on. think I read something recently about Jamaica legalizing. Isn't that crazy? They All have, the craziness that go on in that country over a little bag of weed, and, and you're going to legalize they're it? They're going to legalize it. You, know, yes. you know that Bunny Whaler spent two years in jail because he had two joints in his pocket? He got a year per joint. See, I thought it was if you were selling it that you could get arrested. I didn't know it was just possession. I've seen possession. people walking around just smoking. I mean, just <laughs> I thought it was a regular thing down there. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's. It, I, I suppose. And then the last person, Carlton Banks. Uh, I don't know if you heard today. Um, I know you are a sports fan, and those of us who are sports fans were, I don't know if shocked is the word, but certainly saddened to hear about the passing of the Hall of Fame San Diego Padre Tony, Grin Tony Gwynn, uh, who passed away very, very young, far too young today at 54 years of age. 
Um, had you heard about that? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, one of the greatest hitters of all time. Um, great coach at one point. He was awesome. Um, he is going to be missed. Yeah. There's no sad thing, no other way of saying it. He's going to be missed. Um, you know, he had his bout with cancer. I want to say he had a bout with cancer, particularly from um, chewing tobacco and all that kind of stuff. But still, he was a great hitter, a great man. Um, he had his problems, but nonetheless, you couldn't fault his ability on the baseball field, which was damn near awesome. Yeah, Tony started his career in San Diego in 1982, retired in 2001, played 20 seasons for the San Diego Padres, played in the World Series in 1984 as a young guy, played again in 1998 as a seasoned veteran against the New York Yankees. Uh, he had a lifetime career average of 338. Uh, and for those folks who are not into baseball, let's just say that that's really, really good. Uh, he batted nearly 400 in the 1994 strike short in season. Uh, and to put it in perspective, the last time somebody batted 400 was in the 1940s when Ted Williams did it for the Boston Red Sox. So this dude was serious business. His son plays, I believe, for the Philadelphia Phillies, I think. Uh, but I know his son is in the league, so we want to pass our condolences to the families of Ruby D, Casey Kasem, uh, and the Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. I bless. I told you I was going to ask you a sports question, even though we know that you don't follow. Uh, and the reason why I want to ask this, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to tell you the reason why I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask a question and let the reason kind of flesh itself out. Um, so in the interest of full disclosure, just tell us, do you care about sports at all? I mean, I watch them if it's on. I mean, from what I've seen on Facebook, the NBA playoffs, I mean, the final wasn't really that good. But um, I watch it if it's on. Okay, good. So you don't care, which is what I needed for this purposes of this question. All right. Okay. Um, is it ever, and Carlton, I'm going to come to you in a minute. I know when I ask the question, you're going to want to jump in. So just, you know, subdue your passion for me. Um, oh, this time. Yeah, subdue your passion for me. Is there ever a time where it's appropriate, blessed, to change your alliance to a team can you change your team ever is it ever okay to change your team okay if you're going to change a team it means that you you are more a player fan than you are a team fan that's what in my opinion like there's somebody i know that's a baltimore ravens fan but once ray lewis retired they're not really following it and no you were a ray lewis fan you weren't a baltimore ravens fan or else you would still be one and maybe that's just my opinion but yeah you're you're a follower of a particular group of people me i'm still with the celtics even though the only person left is don't say hey don't don't help her out don't help her out call don't help her out <laughs> hey, he, don't help her who's on the celtics bless i'm trying to remember his name i got it right ray sean ray sean ronda okay all right. no he doesn't Kevin play anymore because if she would have said paul pierce or something like no, that i know paul pierce isn't on there because he was playing for the oh not okay oh she about to say okay yeah, oh, he's, he's he's no it wasn't he, he got traded Where, to where's Brooklyn. kevin garnett oh. it, Kevin Garnett, yeah. he's on OKC. No, yes. no, that's Kevin Durant. That's Kevin Durant. Garnett, Garnett is with my no, okay, OKC. Y'all are picking on me. I don't watch this. No, I'm I, I know who they he's are. On you. He's in Brooklyn <laughs> with Paul Pierce. All right, um, Carl Banks, you and I go back nearly 20 years. We've had similar discussions. I don't know that I've ever asked you this question, and I'll, and, and now because we've kind of fleshed it out and i wanted to ask bless first as a lay person to the sports i wanted to kind of get her opinion first of all michelle k we see you out there and Hi, what's up to michelle k i for, met her this weekend you, hey michelle you, met, you got to meet michelle yes. michelle is like super awesome i uh, met her a couple is. of times and she actually came in studio to greet us so blessings to you our sister um the reason why i asked the question uh Carlton, okay. is because a friend of ours a friend of mine rather um, is a Lakers fan, and she's saying hey to you, blessed by the way, Michelle is. Um, a friend of mine is a Lakers fan, a proclaimed Lakers fan, not that friend you're thinking, a different friend. And this person was openly, openly rooting last night for the San Antonio Spurs. And when questioned about it, this person said to me, I can root for more than one team if I want to. Is this somebody that I know? It is someone that we all know. <laughs> it is someone. I mean, we're not gonna call him out. Yes, so, so we're okay. not gonna we're not gonna call we we are not gonna call that person out. All right, out. I got you. Um, call his wrestling name out. Uh, no, it's oh, not. It's, it's, it's not. Who, it called no. banks. It's not who you're thinking. So, so forget that part. Okay. But the point is, 
I'm asking you as someone who I know, you're a big sports fan. I know that you root for the Cowboys. That's part of your DNA. You're, you got a Cowboys hat tonight. I see it. And so is it ever okay to change alliances, to switch teams, ever? When, you, when I switch teams, it's for a particular situation. He said particular. <laughs> I'm just going to so put that out there. He yeah, said particular. particular. He said <laughs> particular. Yeah, it was specific, particular. Specific. Yeah, it's okay. particular. Okay. No All right, no, cool. I just wanted to make sure that the word knew. Word was particular. Okay, okay cool. Okay. And ain't, ain't a word either. Okay, that's cool. right. Ain't no hashtag with Mark and Jack. So, <laughs> when I need the Giants to lose to the Redskins, I'm a Redskins fan. Gotcha. Okay. When I need the Redskins to lose to the Giants, I'm a I, I'm a Giants fan. You know, there's certain games I'm a particular fan and I'm rooting for, but I would never, ever change my allegiance from being a member of a Dallas Cowboy fan. I'll so, never change so, that. So then are you supposed to stop watching all the games because your team isn't playing anymore? No, are you no, not I'll supposed to? No. Okay. Uh, the only weekend that I'm liable to do something – when when the Cowboys is not playing, it's that bye week. You know when they don't that, have when, when when they see see there you go. That's why that fly winning bitch. <laughs> when we're on our bye week, that's mm-hmm. when I'm subject to say, okay, yeah, watch I'll do anything. something because the Cowboys aren't playing, but there's still football that I want to watch and that I'm in tune to watch. Um, you know, I, I did. You know what? I'll talk about that later. But that's the only time I come off of not being a fan of my team. Um, but even still, I'm a fan of my team. I'm just supporting somebody else in that case. For the time being. For the time being. Now, I know. Do I want Pittsburgh to lose every damn game? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go only 16. First of all, I want to give a shout out to my brother Says. Listen, what up, bro? I got something for you coming up here very, very shortly. So keep your ears on. Um, I, I'm one of those people. I, I guess I'm kind of hard when it comes to picking teams like that loyalty. Like once you are seven years old or twelve or however old you are, you decide Cowboys my team. Whoever your team ends up being, Giants my team. You don't get to check. You don't switch. You don't. You don't show allegiance openly. Now, if you're a Cowboys fan and you want the Redskins to beat the Giants or the Giants beat the, that's different. So the analogy, Carlton, that you laid out, that to me is different what i'm talking about is that person who i know for a fact was a cleveland cavaliers fan only because lebron got drafted there and now they're a miami heat fan because LeBron. because lebron plays there that's what i'm talking about. i'm talking about that person i'm talking about the person who was a mets fan in 1985 when the mets were good and then they became a yankees fan in 1996 when the yankees was i'm talking about that person <laughs> like th- those people drive me crazy and and that's the reason what kind of led me because this person was like really openly rooting for the san antonio spurs last night to beat miami and i know that this person is a lakers fan which i already got a problem with because they live in richmond virginia like <laughs> you're a richmond virginia lakers, lakers fan which i catch heat for and we don't have to have that cross-country discussion because i pick on you about being a cowboys fan by region you're actually supposed to be a Redskins Red fan skins, you know man. but you know he's giving us the blank stare right now <laughs> he's giving us but that that's called that's the scenario that i'm laid out so now that i've kind of clarified it Am I tripping? I mean, because I know I could be a little bit aggressive when it comes to this kind of stuff. I I don't know because see, back during the time of sh- days of Showtime, I was a Lakers fan. I was a Lakers fan up until Magic got the virus. Right at that point, I said. So you it. decided that because Magic Johnson has HIV, you're not going to be a fan of Lakers anymore. I, that's pretty much what I went with. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, it was sad. It was sad. Yeah, that's cold blooded, man. Um, that's what happened And then I became a Jordan fan So I became a Bulls fan for. So you're basically that guy That I can't stand right now You, know what I mean? you are the reason why this question is I'm, out here I'm, I'm team LeBron I don't, ha- I don't have an allegiance to basketball No because you always say the Heatles Heatles like it's yeah, like Heatles, your right. team And I'm right. like every time you say it You know I want to punch you in the face But you're bigger than me so I don't But I mean it, <laughs> you know, But I want to <laughs> Yeah but, but I want to uh, Michelle K says she's loyal to the Pittsburgh Steelers, regardless of how well the season is going. She might get mad at Big Ben, but she can't switch teams. My sister Joy is checking in. What's up, Joy? Hey, I got to hang out with Joy on Saturday, y'all. And y'all didn't. That no. makes me special. Uh, so, look, call Banks. I hear you. I know you're saying that basketball is different for you, but I still think you're crazy as hell for it. You can, but with baseball and football, 
I stick with one team. Um, that's the Dallas Cowboys. So, so, so you're okay with the rules being different across different sports? If there is a particular situation. <laughs> I'm going to need you to stop splitting verbs up in here, man. For real. I mean, really. What's wrong with particular? Oh, okay. All right. I mean, you know, I'm not... Um, well, since we're on the subject, how is it an appropriate way to decide your team? Like, is it okay to say, that team wins, that's my team, or does it have to be based on when you live, where you live, your daddy, your, it's, your it's, daddy rooted for, who your daddy hated? One, parenting is a big factor. And the reason, here's why I'm going to ask you that question. Because I was asked this question. Okay. Because anybody that knows me knows me. My brother Kate up and I go back and forth about this. We both we both grew up in, in Jersey City, New Jersey, and we're both New York Knicks fans. We're both New York Giants fans. Uh, he's a Mets fan, and sadly, and I am a New York Yankees fan. Um, I have a huge problem. I have a huge problem with people who root for teams outside of their region. He thinks I'm crazy for it. He thinks that I'm overzealous and I need to get over myself with it, right? But, but I also, but but I also think that it's okay for you to root for or against your dad's team. And when it's been put to me that Mama J, even though she has no, re, no kind of direct lineage to the New York teams that I root for. If she roots for a Giants fan, she is the fraud that I can't stand. To that you say what? Because we know we we know that if your son decides to root for a team other than the Dallas Cowboys, you're gonna have a problem with it. Yeah, I, he's gonna have to find another house to live in. He, he's gonna have <laughs> wow. he's gonna have to find another house to live in. <laughs> really, he, is. He, he is. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Looks like we're getting a caller here. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's up? Yeah, what's going on, people? This is your man K Dog down in uh, down in Georgia. What's good? At? What's good, family? Yo, what's going on, man? We haven't had you on the airways or ain't no half stepping with Marcus J in quite a while. What's going on, my brother? You hear us talking? What you want to get in on? I'm good, man. I wanted to clarify that in in I did the comment in regards to sports teams, and you know, we could allow the uh, fans to uh, chime or get on in the show. What I'm trying to say, what I try to say is. And, and you can. You know, what I try to say is, is that nowadays it's kind of hard to just restrict people to that ide- ideology as far as your teams because of the fact that now you have NBA.com, you have MLB.com, you have all of these internet as well as uh, cable stations that show the teams from the West Coast, uh, Midwest, so on and so forth. So if I'm a young cat and I like. Uh, you know, I like Brandon Jennings back in the day when he played with Milwaukee, and I kind of started to like Milwaukee. That and that's my team, you know. Then, then I should. I, there's no problem with me liking the team that's in Milwaukee, but I live in Atlanta or I live in New Jersey. Yeah. I know I got you. I want to give a shout out to my brother Big Joe, listening to us in the Queen City. We know. K-Dub, you know who that brother is. I also had an opportunity yes, yes, to fellowship with, with, with my big brother, Big Joe, this weekend. So much love to him in the Queen City. He said that we need to get back down there because we ain't do it right last time. So I know you know what that yeah. means. I guess we need to we need to get on Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't necessarily our fault, but I digress. Yeah, we're going to digress on that. <laughs> he, he, he is also saying he's a Dallas Cowboys fan for life. Said is saying that he was a Bears fan because, oh, Lord. I, I didn't read your comment before. I'm reading now, said, but we all gonna laugh at this. Said said that he was a Bears fan because of Tecmo Bowl, <laughs> and then he went to Tennessee uh, after they got their NFL team. We know the Houston Oilers became the uh, Tennessee Titans. Hey, hey, hey Mark, you check this out. Is it, it be, check this out? What about college teams, man? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I like Georgetown, and I still like Georgetown. Hey, hey, I, I never lived in DC. <laughs> no, I got you. I, I, I got one sport. I, 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 I have softened my stance on the argument to the point where I will admit that my Good. theory on it is flawed, even though I'm not going to, to change. Where you lose me is those people who will throw the Lakers in your face, but then last night they was rooting for the Spurs. Those are the people that really well, raise well, my eyes. Well, well, I'm a Knicks fan. I'm a Knicks fan, and and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I was in here rooting for the Spurs. I was rooting for the Spurs too, but you never once heard me publicly running around talking about how oh. the Spurs is my second oh, team no. and oh. how I love them and how you know if it wasn't for the Knicks, I'd be rooting for the Spurs. You're not gonna hit, and to me, that's fra- <laughs> that's fraudulent. I'm sorry, that's fraudulent. 
Here's what you need to do, all, all people that's listening. If you really want to challenge somebody as far as their fandom, ask them about a draft pick or somebody that they had like 10 years ago. And that'll that, that, that kind of clear it up at that particular point. I think nowadays it's more that you, 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 you tie yourself to a particular individual. Like there's a lot of Chicago Bulls fans that are Chicago Bulls fans now because of Michael Jordan, but also when Mike went to, let's say, Washington. And they, they you know, you got to, it's a split at, at that particular point, you know. And, and, I mean, you got to also think free agency. Back in the day, a lot of cats wasn't going to other teams. That's true, and that's what a lot of people don't have that loyalty because your pl- favorite player is no longer there. I mean, I love Demarcus Ware. Yeah, I wish he was still in Dallas. So, so are you going to have beef with him now that he's in Denver? No, I'm not going to have any beef. But his analogy is because of free agency, you don't get the sense of loyalty with a team anymore yeah. because your favorite player is no when longer we, there. When we when we were growing up in the in the in the eighties or what have you, you know, it was very rare for uh, you know teams to part with their superstars. So, you know, as the 90s came in and free agency started, and this goes for baseball, somewhat um, football and, and, and basketball, when the 90s came in and a lot, of more, lot more high free agents started to move teams, you, you, if you like Daryl Strawberry, you a Mets fan, you grew up like Daryl Strawberry, that's your man, he goes to the Dodgers, you, you know, depending on how you roll, you might go to the Dodgers. You might root for the Dodgers, I should say. Like, yeah, that's my second team, but right. I'm still a Mets fan. You, you know what I'm saying? No, I can dig it. I, I can dig it. I guess I guess for me, it's one of those things is you, you, you love your team, and there's no split love when it comes to your team. You, you, you know, I, I have a hard time. I, while in my mind, I knew that I was rooting for the Spurs in this, in this series because I got a natural hate for the Miami Heat that predates LeBron James. You know, and it just, it, it just, and, and Dub, I know you got it too, and you ain't got to admit to it, but, you know, I've known you long enough to know, and I know why I hate him, so I know you hate him for the same reasons. But, it, but, but, but what, what really, really, really fires me up, Dub, and I'm going to let you get the last word, and then I need to let you go. But what really fires me up is that in 2010, nobody gave a shit about the Miami Heat. And now you got all of these Miami Heat fans running around throwing it in your face like your team sucks. And okay, maybe your team does suck, but you know what? You didn't have a team five years ago, and now all of a sudden you're a Miami Heat fan, and you telling me my team sucks? Those are the people that drive me crazy, and that's why I wanted to ask the question. Well, those are those same Miami Heat fans that you saw leaving when they was down a dub. Those last, those two games in in in, in Miami. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a straight Knicks fan, and trust me. Oh, forget all that. We Giants fan, dog, and we got smacked in Atlanta, and we watched it all the way to the end. And we took it, and we took it, and we took it, and we took it. And and look, not only did we take it, not only did we take it. Crispy clean donut down here, and we stayed to the end. Not even did we take it. Second row behind the bench and stayed to the end. But you got those Miami Heat fans that you know they down a dub with with. 11 minutes left, they like, man, I'm about to be out. I'm glad you said that, dog, because you and me did sit there in the, in, in uh, Atlanta and watch the Giants get embarrassed. And all we did was look salty in pictures, but we ain't go nowhere. <laughs> we ain't go nowhere yeah. until it was tell over. Tell you, 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 should, you should end it and tell them what happened on the train. Oh, yeah. On the train, they was calling us out and, and, and saying crazy stuff to us. We had to remind them, look, we ain't from here, so like Please that ain't going to fly. Like, just, you know, don't, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. Don't, don't even play me like that. Yeah. You know what I said when, when, when I got off the train. They was, they was taking pictures with me. Yeah. Well, you let them have it, but I, I wasn't going for it. I was a little more grumpy than you was that day. <laughs> <laughs> you, you was a good sport. I was like, hell no. I don't like none of you punks. <laughs> ain't no have step yeah, But I yet. killed them when I got off the train and let the door close on it. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, you know what, man? It depends on when you're growing up, probably the area. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it just really depends, man. You know, you think about this. You probably have people in New York, New Jersey that have a choice of teams, you know, and shoot, there's some people that I know that grew up two blocks from me. Uh, they're a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Hey, look, I got a, I got a homie who, our homie, PB, if he's listening, you can call in and defend himself. This dude is a Mets fan, a Chicago's Bulls fan, and a Minnesota Vikings fan. We're going to leave it there. Ain't no half stepping. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus Day. All right, Doug, we're going to let you go. But check it. We're going we gonna to get into some craziness towards the end of the show. So feel free to call us back.
That's what's up, man. Peace, everybody. And you know how step on Marcus J. Joining us in the studio is my co-host, who just walked in the building during that last segment. I got my sister, S. Y. Butler. <laughs> what's up, girl? Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How's everyone? Doing fabulous. It's good to see you. We're glad to have you. You ready to jump in and uh, talk some trash I, and stuff? I, I wanted to ask you a question. Ask me a question? No, I'm not sure who PD is. And, and, and Pablo? I'm, I'm, P, I'm, PB. 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 Ain't and nobody. Let's just call him Paul Bunyan. No, we're going to call him Pretty Boy because that's pretty his boy? name. Pretty okay. Boy. PB so, stands for Pretty Boy. I don't know what's wrong with Pretty Boy being a Mets fan and a Chicago Bulls fan because so am I. I think that's the dumbest shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> wow. Well, nobody's paying you for those. Okay, thoughts. well, I get to still have my opinion. But, so, I mean, if you stop me to boy, talk about that. I'm with you. Like, we are not. Marcus is really? getting the you stop hand. Me for that. This is what we've He's been missing. He's getting the hand. You stop me for that. You go ahead and be a blue and orange and your black and red. Must be out your damn mind. Nah. Just like he I always said, says everybody out there damn oh mind. My God. Yeah, how can we all be out of our damn mind? He's the only one that's sane. Because he's the one who's out of his damn mind. Yeah, that's right. I am the only one that's sane. Do you know I got here in like ten minutes? Yeah, I appreciate that. Do you know who did it? Uh, Jesus is behind the wheel. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you, he was showing off the co-pilot because Michael Jackson. Oh yeah, uh, that new CD. If y'all don't have it. What is the delay? Yeah, Escape, man. I bought it when it came out. That's I what's mean, up. Would I be terrible to say I'm not really? That I don't want to talk to you about Okay. Now. But. <laughs> Damn. I, I couldn't guess help that it. I like <laughs> getting one repeat, repeat. Then I was like, okay, stop repeating. Went to the second song. Repeat. Went to the third song. Repeat. And I was like, oh, shoot, my exit. <laughs> I, 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 I can dig it. That the, the CD, when I bought it, um, there's a song this song that's on the commercials right now, Love Something. Love, Love Don't Feel That Good. Yeah. So yeah, that one right there. That's the joint right there. Oh, my God. I'll yeah. tell you, I played like five times. That times. one right there, because well, most of those songs were recorded during the Thrill and the Bad Days. Yeah. And I think that one was recorded during Thriller. Uh -huh. And it sounds like it fits with Thriller. You know, uh, so that, that song is great. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. All right, listen, let's move on. A um, couple of things for what the hell that I want to jump into. First of all, Michelle K is saying, what's up to you, S.Y.? Michelle, my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Call Banks. Yeah. Um, I'm getting uh, I'm getting this article, S.Y., from the Huffington Post. Call Banks. This one is about a burglar who was accidentally freed by the jury. And then he went home and got killed that night. Who killed him? Well, uh, this is, uh, I'm getting this out of Fresno. The AP is reporting it. Um, he was given his freedom because the jury made a mistake on the paperwork. They signed a not guilty form Wednesday. Uh, and the judge, of course, was pissed, but it wasn't nothing he can do about it. And so they had to release him, in jail, release him from jail. Uh, after he was released, the dude went to the home of his sister uh, to get some of his stuff. And the police said that he apparently got into a fight with his sister's boyfriend. The two had a history of problems. Uh, and basically, once they got into it, the dude stabbed this guy uh, in the chest with a knife. Uh, and he died. Now, normally, I wouldn't want to tell a story like this because it's, it's just a little bit too dumb. But this one had, like, all of the makings of a, what the hell? Like... <laughs> Jail sounds pretty good right now. Yeah, <laughs> man. Call, yeah, exactly. Call. That's, that's what I was going to say. Jail could be really a nice place to be right about now. You got choices. And, um, oh, you know, man. that choice of life or death. Mm -mm. <laughs> so who killed him? The sister's boyfriend. The sister's boyfriend. Um, the sister's boyfriend. Apparently him and her had beef. And, you know, apparently he was facing a nice little piece of time if he had got convicted like he was supposed to. He was supposed to get convicted, but the jury filled out the wrong paperwork. But see, man, you holding the jury accountable for his own death. That ain't the jury fault. No, I, I, well, I, I guess it, I, actually it is. You can't make that kind of mistake. I mean, I don't know that you, I blame you them. Human? I don't you know. Human? I don't know that hold you blame on, on, the on, jury on, for on, um, the data. guy's death. So let's data. sue the jury. Yeah, Data, are well, you, are you, I mean, I mean, data, are you human? I mean, already we out of our mind. Every time I come in, you out of your damn mind. I know. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you made a mistake. You made a mistake. Of okay, course, you're, you're a human. Star Wars fan. You ain't a Trekkie. I don't see no. Uh, I have no idea where you're going. Like you're jumping around see, with your references. No, I get data from the next generation. Yeah, Star exactly. Wars. I get all of that. Okay. But the point is, the, the dude. Sequence of events. The jury. Oh, yes. Him. 
not guilty or signed a not guilty form and the next thing you know he's going home ends up beefing with them. I mean none of that would have happened if they would have found you know, him it's just like the dude who walked around the bus he ain't playing on getting hit by that bus I, you know at, at the end of the day the jury made a mistake. I think we should sue the, 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 the jury. I don't know if there's anything. Why should anybody I, I, sue the jury? I don't, I don't know if there's any suable offenses here, but all I'm saying is <laughs> the jury made a mistake, and because of their mistake, oh, the sequence of events led to him dying. Now, who's to say that he wouldn't have gone to jail if they didn't make a mistake and gotten shanked in the shower? It probably yeah, don't know that. I, I mean, that, that, Death that, was waiting either way that, with the knife. That could have happened because, so you know, they say you go when it's your time. Tan is a new black. <laughs> really? Did he say tan is the new? I didn't get tan, it. Tan, tan, tan is the new. I don't get it either. You don't get it. I don't watch. He went from the jail uniform to like mourn death. Yeah, but how is black synonymous with death? I don't get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So 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 that's why. What's what's your thoughts on the story? I told you. I think we should sue the jury. If I was a family member, how do you sue the if jury? If I was though? a family member, because y'all messed up. Well sue the state or whatever whomever if y'all messed up and did his paperwork and sent him out this would have never happened if y'all would have did your paper right same way people sue been behind for bars he would have been behind bars you know you see lawsuits for dumber things the the um, the wife sues the mistress and wins so you know what my brother's dead because you made a mistake my big brother. You know, they could probably do that. I could see a, a sister doing it. She ain't mad at the boyfriend, but she mad at the jury because no. they should have had him in jail. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can see. Right. Nope. My brother Joe said that it was karma. Pretty much, like I said. Well, did. you know, I, um, you know, he's gonna get it no matter what, one way, shape, with form. a knife. He could have got shanked in prison. Then you know what? Let's see if we get shanked. I don't know. I mean, it, this one just seems. A little odd. I'm. I'm. I feel bad. It's not one where I really have any emotion yeah. one way or the other. You know, I think it's kind of messed up that the jury made this kind of mistake. The dude belongs in jail, and then I think that it's messed up that the guy ended up dying. But at the end of the day, you find yourself in an altercation with somebody that you got history with. That's kind of a you problem. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I don't know he's how. He's dead now. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's dead now. But we do know that that kind of fight could have gone either way. What if he'd have killed the guy? I saw a story that, you know, I wasn't planning on doing, you know, but I guess to, to kind of reference this one, I saw a story recently, Bless, where a guy had done 32 years in prison and he was exonerated through DNA. 32 years he did in jail. He had no business in jail. He was exonerated through DNA. And a year and a half later, he killed somebody legitimately he killed somebody at a party and dragged the body out of the party in front of the people and waited for the police and when the police came he admitted that he had done it and promptly went back to jail that's prison mentality by that time yeah he's, he's already you know he spent to, all his yeah. life almost there so you know why at this point do i have to pay rent buy groceries get insurance that's, when i have all these freebies free cable and the whole nine that's crazy you know i have stab and marcus yeah i call the last go back home call the last one i want to get into i really want your opinion on this one this is one is about a woman who went to jail um, because of her children's truancy. This is out of Philadelphia. Uh, her children were truant. And um, the short version is she ended up being sentenced to two days in jail because of her children's truancy. And halfway through her two-day sentence, she was found dead inside of the jail cell. Uh, Eileen De Niro, 55, of Reading, Pennsylvania, was found dead in the jail cell Saturday, halfway through the 48-hour sentence that would have erased about $2,000 in fines and court costs. The debt had accrued since 1999 and involved several of her seven children, most re- recently her boys at a vocational high school. Uh, I'm getting this one from abc7chicago.com. The story is out of Pennsylvania. Uh, they're saying that the death has not been deemed suspicious, but the cause has not been determined. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this one up is we know about the laws and we know that you're a pretty you know straightforward law and order guy but i want to know your opinion on parents going to jail because of the truancy of their children what's your thoughts on that i totally agree uh, and in a lot of cases that's what needs to happen because the parent is ultimately responsible for the kid up until the age of 18 and if you're allowing the child or if you're not keeping abreast of where your child is then you know there's some penalties that you have to pay or you should pay 
Um, it's like the guy who the judge who told the lady she has to learn oral sex because she's got too many kids. You know, it's certain things that are common right. sense and that you need okay. to think. I mean, you know, I took it there. That's common sense. I took it there. She got too many kids. She need to learn how to. Yeah, yeah. Watch, watch yourself there. I never heard that one. You ain't heard that one. <laughs> never oh, heard man. that one. Yeah, yeah. see, that's yeah, that's out there. We can always count on you. For yeah, those you can. Things. You can like, Thank yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I disagree. Mean, I'm not sure. I disagree with that. <laughs> Maybe she needs to learn it, even if she don't have it. She's with the children. I'm just saying. That's why. Yeah, I don't think she, I don't think the parent should be responsible in every situation. Now, if it's where you know the parent drops the kids off to school for whatever reason, then yeah, if the kid has no other way to get to school and it's the parent's responsibility to get them there, then that's fine. But once you get your 15-year-old and 16-year-old, I'm not going to be responsible. Ain't no half step on Marcus. Yeah, we're getting a call. A caller, you on the live line. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, what's up, LB? It's Joe up in Charlotte in the Queen City. My big brother, Big Joe, is calling in. What's going on, man? We shouted you out a little while ago. We know you've been listening for a while. What you want to get in on tonight? Oh, I, I was just listening to the, the last conversation conversation you all were having. I might be a little bit behind you, but I was listening to the conversation about the truancy. Okay, that's where we're at right now. We're right there right now. Okay. I was laughing at um, a situation because it's, it's funny how parents are held responsible for their children, but the court system and the system won't even allow you to discipline your, your children in public. Right. It's, it's really strange how you can't discipline your children, but you're held responsible for them for certain things. I mean, I'm from the old school knowledge that you know whoop a kid where they do the, the crime at and you keep the moving yeah may not be right but i turned out pretty good yeah i think we all i think we all did in, in our generation i think we've gotten to a point where the inmates are running the asylum for lack of a better term and you've got the system that have caused the parents to become a little bit more afraid of what may happen to them if they decide to discipline their children the way they choose to discipline them now do you think big bro do you think there's ever a time that you should put the parents in prison because of the actions of the children? I, I agree with Carlton for the little bit that, you know, you are responsible for your children. Do I totally agree with that? No. But if you, when you have children who are raising children, it's kind of hard to discipline somebody when you don't know how to dis- what discipline is. Right. So, so if you fall in the category that, that you don't know what you're doing, then you need to learn. Eh, okay, you're responsible for them until they turn 18. I ha- I have mixed feelings about it. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> yeah. Because like I said, there's no way in the world my children would cut up like that. You know, you help raise them. They, they yeah. know better. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm not going to jail for my children. Are you kidding me? No, we mm. part of the same village. We raised our kids together. But the thing, the thing of the matter is, you know, when I see children in public places speak to their parents in just the most obnoxious and disrespectful ways and you see the parents trying to have a discussion with them you know i'm not surprised that that's the same parent that can't get their child to go to school and because they can't get their child to go to school here we are going to prison or jail rather because of that and unfortunately this parent lost their life now i don't know the history of this woman i don't know her deal but i can use this correlation to say that the less control you have over your child the less likely you are to be able to force them to go to school and you shouldn't have to force them you should be able to tell them take your ass to school when they go to school what you think about that yeah that's an expectation that's an expectation <laughs> we yeah. have a choice yeah you if i got to go to work to every do. day then your ass got to go to school what you think you're going to stay here while i'm at work oh you can't stay in my house no 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 no, no. If you're going to stay here, either you got to go to school or get a job. And until you turn 18, you got to go to school yeah. and have a job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. We're going to take a first break. Big bruh, feel free to call us back later on during the show. We're going to get into some other stuff later on. Uh, we're going to be uh, asking a question that I know that you, and I'm going to let you stay on the line while I tease this. Uh, we're going to ask the question about women and Father's Day. I also have a question about consensual sex that we're going to get into later on. In this next segment, my sister S.Y. is going to hit us up with a healthy segment. Says you want to give us a little bit of tease, what are we going to talk about in the healthy segment? Watch your babies. Watch your babies. For my big brother on the live line, S.Y., Miss Bless, Calm Banks, and yours truly, Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping. We'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> 